Wine TV. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. Everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, here for another dish of the show. All right, so we're going to do the next Vine Box um, shipment that I got here in October. Um, and um, yeah, let's get. Oh, so I'm not going to get into just yet. So, between last episode with this and this episode, I ran some numbers. In other words, over the past 24 hours, I ran numbers, which I should have done the first time, but. I, I just, you know, didn't think really I needed to. So um, we'll go back to the last wines. Um, so, uh, okay, first of all, these wines that we're going to do, you you can find them on the Vine Box website, and you can buy uh, these three wines, and among some other wines, full bottle price, uh, or full bottles for, for whatever, okay? You can buy them. Um, and if you think you like six bottles, you get free shipping, or it's or it's cheap shipping, or something like that. Um, but the, the three bottles I did before are not available on the site. Now this is maybe because they were September's wines. So I don't know, but let's kind of go over them real quick. Cause I, I, this is somewhat important to the whole, whole shebang. All right. So the Nieto, uh, Le Ravines, um, it's funny. A pro First of all, none of the three wines really are available in the United States necessarily. Um, these are really mostly available outside of the United States, though I think maybe one of the three I could, I could have bought somewhere, like some little tiny shop somewhere. Um, but I'm pretty sure they all were in Europe. I had to get in. Uh, but uh, Berry Brothers and Rood, uh, and Rudd, not Rood, Rudd, um, they're a very large retailer out of the UK. Uh, they have um, that wine listed for $34.95 as far as pounds, and that in today's conversion, which is, well, yesterday's conversion, the 26th of October, um, that was $42.76. Uh, if you go to Wine Searcher, and it was all foreign wine shops, it, the range was $30 to $40, and then there was a place called Wine Fetch, that's right, um, that I think is the United States. They were selling it for thirty nine ninety nine. They said it regularly sells for sixty dollars. So you can see, you can see, um, there's a wide range of pricing there, depending on who's selling it to you. And something to tell you about wine, wine searcher. If, if you look it up, whether it's you find stuff in the United States or around the world, you will see that some people have like super cheap prices on a wine, and some people are like, "Are you serious? Like you're really selling it for that much?" But you know, that's just what it is. Uh, the Chateau de la Gardine, uh, Wine Searcher, the average they say um, is $35, and that's worldwide. Um, they convert they convert over $2. Um, it says it has a range about $41, and there was a place in Canada I could buy it. And the Chateau Le Crostes, um, was the range was $17 to $20 under Wine Searcher. Those are all outside the United States. Um, so... We're talking about these are glasses of wine. Well, it's 100 milliliters, and I mentioned last the last show with these. That's that's not a whole lot. That's you know because you get seven. There's 750 milliliters in a standard bottle of wine. So we're talking there's a seventh, slightly less than a seventh of a bottle in here. So um, 750 milliliters is the equivalent of 25.4. Uh, uh, ounces, 25.3 something ounces, it rounds up 25.4 ounces. In the United States, um, a standard, uh, for the purposes of determining alcohol, how much alcohol you get per a standard drink, uh, in the United States, it is a five ounce glass of wine. Um, most restaurants usually pour a six ounce glass of wine. Um, but when you go through all this stuff with, um, with ounces and blah, 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 it also has to do with the alcoholic strength. So a five 
ounce glass of wine is based upon a 12% alcohol by volume uh, wine, which honestly, as far as the United States wines, pretty much doesn't exist. Um, New World wines don't normally get down to 12%. Um, you do have them, but 12% is kind of harkens back to Bordeaux is a great example. Their wines usually in that 12 to 13 ish percent uh, historically, uh, though there are now examples of Bordeaux wines that are higher in, in, in uh, alcohol uh, percentages. But your typical older world wines, so Europe, European wines, at least like French wines, uh, not necessarily Spanish and Italian, but French wines, maybe German wines, um, tend to be lower alcohol. So that's the 12 percent there. We're not talking of you know, the 15 percent fruit bombs from Napa Valley. Um, and I was only 3% alcohol, but it means a lot. I mean, just, yeah, just think about drinking a, a, a beer that's like uh, 4 to 5% and then drinking a beer that's like 8%. It's like more of a doubling of it, but there's still a higher percentage, right? Um, so uh, let's see here. I had a whole write-up on all that, but I just kind of summed it up. Um, so now when we talk about how much on the average, a bottle of wine costs with that with the old set. I already drank them, by the way. Um, that was going to be eighty-eight bucks in wine. So okay, you're getting you pay thirty-five bucks for eighty-eight dollars worth of wine. That comes out to a total cost when you're um, figuring out how many ounces are actually milliliters. I, I, I use that instead. Um, the the I paid thirty-five dollars for that box, and the box just the wine cost. We're not talking about shipping the box, the the materials to to to, to put you know the, the the actual vials and all that stuff uh, is eleven dollars and seventy-three cents. Um, now, granted, that include that, that's just using the standard bottles. Those bottles, you know, the 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 cost of the bottle is included in all that and corks and everything. But just if we if we made the equivalent. Eleven dollars and seventy three cents. So we'll say the we'll say the the little vials are included in that cost, but the box itself and shipping aren't. So I mean, hey, we got to make money, right? I'm not saying they got to sell it if it costs thirty five dollars or thirty dollars for the actual product. They have to sell that they, you know, if I pay thirty five, it can't. I they can't make money if it costs them thirty dollars um, to to procure all this. Um, but that comes out to. 3.9 cents per milliliter. So that's key. Remember that. Um, so also, let's get some more into the general thing. So while these guys tout, hey, we got this awesome technology, we I don't remember them saying they invented it necessarily, but there's a patent. There's patents on these things. Um, WIT France is the actual company that created these vials and this the the special uh, enclosures and the, the method, the machinery to put the wines in the vials, the how, how they how they cut the vials, everything. They are the ones who created this. Uh, they've been around since uh, 2007. Um, Vinebox looks like they've only been around for like a year, right? Not even. Um, now these could be the two. These two companies could be the same company. Uh, this could be you know a part of you know the WIT France could be the parent company. This could be a uh, United States subsidiary, or they could have just bought. You know, they could have just paid WIT to, hey, we want to get your wines. Because guess what? WIT France, if you go to their website, it's the same wines, basically. Um, and they're all from France. And I did remember in the last episode, I said something like, these are all like European wines and they're looking, yeah, they're all French wines. And even the WIT France website says, hey, we're looking to, um, we're looking to uh, expand beyond France. Now, the company itself, WIT, is based in the UK, if I remember correctly. But I mean, they were started from people from the UK. But it's but the facilities are actually in Bordeaux, uh, where they bottle everything and yada yada. Um, okay, so that's it. So that's a little background on on the company who who actually invented the stuff. Again, it could be Vinebox, could be like just another branch of the company. I'm not saying they're not, but. The thing is, WIT ha says that, you know, hey, are you, if you're interested in, you know, having wines, having our wines and, and I guess getting them or selling them or whatever, contact us. We, you know, this is our, this is our method, this is blah, 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 blah. And you look at the vials on there, it's exactly the same. Matter of fact, on the little screw cap part, they say WIT, which it says on these screw caps. So it's not, wine box isn't hiding it necessarily, it's just not advertising it, right? Okay, um, so let's get into the books 
And of course I've taken these out and I've moved them around. The white wine is the one we're gonna do first. And actually I think, yeah, we'll do it, we'll do it in that order. Because the, the, yeah, anyway. So uh, this one is the 2014, and I know you can't see it. Uh, it is the Domaine Saint-Luc, Domaine Saint-Luc, uh, Cuvée Lorraine, um, and then it's Grignan Le Ademar. That's the uh, AOC. So you're like, huh? What the hell are you talking about, dude? All right, so um, again, another Viognier um, from the Côte d'Oron. Um, but the Adamar is the AOC for it. So more Viognier. Yay. Um, so this on the Vine Box website, and I know you can't tell, but the, there's a little WIT, little WIT here on the side. Um, on the uh, Vine Box website, it says it they, they sell it, they sell it to you for 20 bucks. Um Oh, did I come? Did I tell you how how many ounces this is? I don't think I put it on there. So a hundred milliliters. We didn't really get to that. Is three point three eight ounces. So uh, yeah. So that's the other thing. A standard bottle. I'm sorry. Standard glass of wine. We're talking about is in the United States is five ounces. Well, um, that's about a hundred and fifty milliliters. In Europe, the st the the standard serving size. Okay, for a glass of wine on a legal standpoint, not necessarily what restaurants do, is 100 milliliters. So that's why they say, oh, you're getting a glass of wine. Because legally in Europe, that's what this is. All right. In the United States, it's not necessarily a legal thing. It's just that when you're trying to figure out, well, how much alcohol is in beer, wine, and spirits, uh, five ounces is what the United States uh, has determined is a standard serving size, um, which is slightly less than um, what, you know, it's one ounce less than what restaurants typically do. Because restaurants, they they figure out that there's four glasses of wine to a bottle. Well, that's at six ounces a glass. So it's 24 ounces, so you have 1.4 ounces left over. Um, if it's five ounces, well, then you can get, um, you can actually get five glasses of wine because that's 25 ounces. So you only are missing 0.4 of an ounce, okay, when you figure it out that way. Whereas with the six ounce pour, you're missing at 1.4 ounces. So that can't account for over pouring by accident or whatever. Um, so in Europe, 100 milliliters, which is 3.38 ounces, is what they figure it out as. Um, but most restaurants, their wine by the glass portion is, or serving size is 125 milliliters, which is, uh, I think it's four ounces, which I did not do that. And I closed the, the, uh, blah, 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 the converter. So anyway, so while I'm stalling, yeah, I believe, I believe it's around, um, that much. All right. So here we go. So 125 milliliters equals U.S. fluid ounces, 4.23 ounces in the United States. So the United States also has their own version of what certain sizes are versus the rest of the world and Imperial and blah, blah, blah. Okay, so we got that done. And let's move back over here because we need to, nope, we don't need them. Uh, Cuvée Lorraine. I thought I had this all set up. Actually, I guess I didn't because um, Joy, Domaine de la, uh, 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 no, Domaine St. Luke. I swear I had Domaine St. Luke up and running. So anyway, again, I'm going to stall for a second here. All right, so anyway, uh, ta-da. All better now. There we go. I, for some reason, closed that, that tab from earlier today. All right, so um, they also, Donny St. Luke, so uh, they're also a bed and breakfast, and they have wine as art. Um, it doesn't really, I don't really have a, a thing that tells us 
who they are. Um, but we do have their uh, oils for their wines. Our wines, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Anyway, uh, I'm not going to get into all that because we got to get moving along. I said $20 on the um, vine box thing for a bottle. Um, when you go to Wine Searcher, which is basically, again, the place to look for pricing for the most part, it, it, and you have to take the pricing on Wine Searcher with a grain of salt. I've already mentioned that. It can be wildly a, a, a large spread. Um, but it's about $13 per, uh, per bottle on Wine Searcher. Uh, I did find a French retail, and these are, these are all like outside the United States. I found a French retailer specifically that sells it for the equivalent of $11.50. So, two-time markup. Anyway, again, they got to make money. I don't know how they're getting the wine. I don't know how much they're paying for it. I doubt they're, you know, they're buying it from a retail shop and then turning it over because that's that that that'd be stupid. Because they talk about they have, you know, these wineries are their partners. So blah blah blah. So they're they're definitely reselling the wine. It's just a matter of how much the wineries are selling it to them to repackage it. All right. Floral, but there's a little bit of uh, it's hard for me to describe smelling bitterness, but there is a slightly there was like a like a like a bitter like a bitterness to it. Um almost smoke, but not quite. Yeah, I'm trying to, I, I'm really having a hard time describing it. And um, literally it could just be, I just don't have enough wine in there. I mean, I'm, I, I want to enjoy these wines later, so I don't want to pour half of it, which I'm almost at half of a vial. There we go. I pretty much have already decided that reviewing these wines isn't the best use of the money that I'm spending on them. Really, just because I, I've got to, I've got to almost do half a vial <laughs> to uh, to review it, and unless I'm going to just flat out drink it on camera, um, yeah, I'm, I'm wasting way too much wine. Not saying it's not worth buying, just for the review purposes. I'm uh, I'm using half the half the wine to sample it. Um, yeah, I mean, other than that, I don't really get a whole lot else. It's pretty closed. It's pretty not very aromatic at all, which is weird because Viognier is usually an aromatic wine. I like the other Viognier better. It just has more flavor to it, more body to it. This is, I would have a hard time describing this as Viognier. I would probably think it was as Pinot Grigio. It's very light. Um, has a good, decent amount of acid, but it's kind of like orange. And now that I'm thinking about it, I get like an orange blossom to it. Um, but it's not, it's just not as vibrant. Is that a good word to use? I don't know. Just not as in your face as, as the other Viognier, which it's not necessarily what it has to be, but you know, I just don't really get as much out of it. Yeah, it's, it's kind of citrusy, as in more orange, but it's got some lemon, some lime. Very acidic, um, very light, uh, not very aromatic. I mean, I honestly would think this is a Pinot Grigio. Um, and not that this is bad, Pinot, not that, not that Pinot Grigio is bad, but yeah, I'm just not sold on it. You know, again, this is room temperature. Which kind of funny, I was doing some research today on, on wines, these wines and wines in general, and they were, white wine wasn't talked about, but they were talking about how to spot an expat or a foreigner. In France, I guess the joke is they're drinking, at a cafe, they're drinking wine. Okay, <laughs> I, I don't, I mean, apparently um, it's very, it's very taboo uh, with red wine to drink red wine by itself, not having it with food. 
Um, the only time you're going to drink red wine is definitely with food. Uh, you're not going to drink drink it before a certain time unless it's like a glass of wine at lunch. Um, and, you know, if you bring wine over, blah, blah, blah. It was all these rules. And I was like, okay, I get it. Our culture in the United States is different than France. So. Oh, the point of that was um, that, oh, we drink our red wines at room temperature. Well, I've had that discussion plenty of times on the, on the show. Room temperature in the old days wasn't 72 degrees. Room temperature was a lot colder. <laughs> Um, if the, if the, if the time, time of year was, uh, you know, uh, was appropriate, uh, room temperature, usually we're talking like in the sixties because there's a, there's a, a cove, you know, the cellar and all that. And it's kept at a, you know, a much more reasonable temperature as far as serving. So, but restaurants are the same all over the world. They, they leave their, they leave their wines out. And so whatever the room temperature of the, of the actual restaurant is what you serve the red wines at. It's not bad. Um, at twenty bucks from these guys, it's about right, I guess. Um, but if I can, you know, granted I can't can't find it in the United States, but if I can get it for thirteen to fifteen bucks, it's a better price for it. I'm not floored by it. It's like it's okay. I'd rather have the other one, which the other one, um, granted, was um, how much was that? Come on, let's find it. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, that was the, the Domain Niero. And that was... $30 to $40. But hey, you know, I guess I'm comparing two classes of wine. Probably not very fair, but... Anyway, I would rather drink the other one, but then again, at 35 bucks, $40. But it was a Condru, so that makes a little more sense. All right, so let's move on to the next wine. I just want to put the box out there for display purposes. So the next wine we're going to do here is... This is the Lucien Muzard et Fille. Uh, 2014 Centenay Appellation Centenay Controle Villas Vignes uh, old old vines. I know I totally butchered the French there. Um, so this is a Pinot Noir, a Burgundy, if you will. And uh, uh, I th there's an actual website uh, for the distributor, I guess, or or this is called Vintage59.com. So um, I didn't really look at who they are, but they have a they have a listing of this wine among other wines. Um, let's try to put a little bit more in there. Um, and so this one, the this particular wine uh, says this comes from several parcels. This comes from several parcels. The biggest being Claude de Hates Hates H A T E S. Uh, total service is one point four hec hec one point four hectares, which is three point four six acres. Thank you very much for putting it in there. And production averages 750 cases a year. Um, let's see here. I, oh, here it is. No, that's them. Here we go. Um, so this particular domain, uh, uh, the uh, BourgogneWines.com, uh, Bourgogne-Wines.com website, is actually a really great resource about Burgundy, you know, Burgundian wines. Um, they actually have a, a small little. Uh, Thing it says our domain, so I, they, these these guys may have written the stuff, but it says uh, belongs to a very old Santenois. It's in Santenay, right? Family where they have been wine growers from father to son for nine generations. Oh yeah, we got. Shit. Is there anything else on here I need to say? A little bit of information on there too. Um, Jacques Muzard in uh, 1645, I guess, was the first generation. Uh, then they say the Monsieur and Madame Lucien Muzard structured the vineyard in the 1960s. First of all, see this little disconnect here. I don't know what it says. Uh, first of all, by renting the vineyards. So were they renting the vineyards at that point, but they owned them prior? I don't really understand. So this disconnect here, they've been 
wine growers since then, but what about this, okay? Then gradually buying them, Claude and Hervé Muzard now work the 16 hectares of the family domain distributed over various climats in Centenay, Chazenay, Montrachet, and Pomard. Uh, overall production of the wine, overall production is 5% white wine and the rest is red. Um, and then they use traditional methods, manual harvest stocks removed from grapes and matured in vat. Um, and then harvesting in 20 kilogram crates, sorting table, temperature control during winemaking, blah, blah, blah. And then matured in oak casks with the, with a distribution according to vintages of 30 to 40% of new casks. So depending on depending on the wine, they're using thirty to forty percent new oak. All right, um, and then I think I clicked on that. Yeah, that's more of a thing about Centenay and Step. Uh, now it says uh, this: Let this old lady vines planted in nineteen twenties hang out in your glass for ten minutes while you pick out what you what to watch on Netflix to really enjoy the impressive power of old vines. And they're telling you that's what the Vieles Vignes means. Um, there's nothing else really on here to talk about. You look like I need a glass of wine. All right, on the back of this. All right, Whoosh. Karnak, there you go. All right, uh, this is a price of on the vine box, uh, blah, 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 39. No, that's the other one, $45 for a full bottle. Um, there's a retailer called Vin de Tonnieres, Tonnieres, Vins des Tonneliers. If <laughs> we're going to go all nasty American, um, Vin des Tonniers, uh, in France for 20, it, it, the equivalent of $21 and 16 cents. Uh, pretty much is around 20 ish bucks on wine searcher when I looked it up. Um, so yeah, so 20, maybe $25. Um, from most places, I guess in Europe, but 45 bucks here. Now I get it. <laughs> wine might be, wine probably is, French wine is probably cheaper in France than over here. You got to get it over here. You got to pay for the extra shipping, blah, blah, blah. You know, just like, uh, I knew some people visited, uh, where I work and they were in Australia and they ordered an Australian wine and they're going, wow, that's really expensive. I'm like, well, first of all, it's restaurant markup. But, oh, no, the restaurants, okay, well, you're buying Australian wine in Australia. Even if it's the exact same bottle. Um, but then I said, yeah, but I bet you uh, Napa wine was super expensive. Oh, yeah, no, yeah. Come on, man. All right, so let's check it out. On the nose. Not hugely aromatic. Kind of a, a smoky cherry. Yeah, a, little, a, a, a tad bit of earth earthiness to it, but it's like dry earth, not this wet earth. A little bit of funk to it. It's really light and, and, and aromatic. So I'm, I'm like, I'm digging to get stuff out of this. Some spices, traditional baking spices. And I realize I already know what the wine is, so I'm, I'm searching for the things that should be in there, and they're there. Um, I'm also just searching for anything, and, and pretty much when I smell something, I'm like, oh yeah, that's this. But it's not highly aromatic. Again, you know, I don't have a whole lot in the wine glass, but at forty-five freaking dollars a bottle, I think I want to drink as much of this as I can, right? Mm. I don't know why I just spit that, considering I just talked about how much the actual bottle is. Um, it, it tastes like a Pinot Noir. Now, there's a bit of oomph to it. Um, I really don't want to say there's a New World uh, quality to it, because there are plenty of burgundies out there that taste just like this and are just as good. Okay. This is a really good wine. Um, this is totally a $45 bottle of wine. I mean, 
I know you, I could buy for 25, uh, sorry, for 20 ish bucks, but this is probably close to a retail ish, maybe 30 to 40 bucks. Maybe I can spend 45 on it, but it's definitely of that quality. I mean, you gotta realize we're calling, we're talking about Centenay, which um, is near um, uh, Chesney Montreche. Um, it actually butts up to it. Um, but it's, it's not, you know, Cincinnati is not, it's not a, a there are no Grand Cru vineyards there. There are some Premier Cru uh, vineyards there. Um, it, it's not the, it's not necessarily the, 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 the creme de la creme of, of the Burgundy world, but it's not like village, it's not village level or Bourgogne level wine. Absolutely not. So, you know, it's, it's a good middle, middle of the ground, middle of the road. Um, level as far as the wine. On the palate, you get way more of the traditional uh, Burgundian um, qualities. Um, it's not the fruit that's coming through um, necessarily. It's the earthiness. Um, it is, for lack of a better word, stemmy, even though they said they take the stems out. Um, but there's like a, um, a bramble to it. Uh, there's definitely like a cedar box to it. Um, there's dried, dried, uh, flowers to it. Um, there's a, a tart cherry to it, not like ripe full body, you know, like big, you know, bold cherries that you get from like new world, like California, Pinot Noirs, especially when they add Syrah to it. Um, though, honestly, most, more and more Pinot Noirs that I encounter at the level that I'm dealing with in, in the restaurant world, um, they're 100% Pinot Noirs, so um, they're, they're they're out there from California. They're not all they don't all put Syrah or some other grape in there to give it color. Um, sometimes they just extended maceration is why they have so much color to them. Um, but um, yeah, it has all those things that you're going to get from a Pinot Noir. Um, it, this is a this it's a good Pinot Noir. Forty five bucks, probably the upper limit that I would say you want to spend on this level of of uh, Burgundy. Um, if you can find it in that twenty to thirty dollar range, that's probably a little bit better pricing. But again, twenty bucks in France, twenty five bucks in France, the equivalent. You get to the United States, you're probably gonna have to bump it up a little bit. So um, I get it, forty five bucks in the United States sounds about right, but it might be a little bit on the high end considering other uh, other Burgundies. No, Siri, I don't want to talk to you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go away. The new phone, you don't have to have it plugged in. Actually, I think from the 6S, you don't have to have it plugged in for that little assistant to um, respond. You can just say it. So every once in a while, it, it misunderstands you. Um, it's spying on you. Anyway, um, but considering the um, what else is out there in the same level, yeah, this is probably in the upper side of the upper end of uh, the price price point. But I like it. It's good wine. If you're able to find it, you know, hopefully you're not spending too much money on it, but it's pretty good. All right. Um, that wine basically makes the value of the box pretty close, but we're going to get to that in a second when I get done with all three wines. All right. Um, next wine. This is the Domaine de la, Domaine de la Rec Rectory. Rectory. Rectory, I don't know. Color Cote Montagne. Man, I really need to learn how to pronounce French. Um, well, there's that. Uh, this is a 2013. Um, let's get to the next card. Karnak again. Um, a Spanish wine in French clothing. So this is a mixture of Grenache, Carignan, Syrah, Cunoa, and Movedra from the languedoc Rousson area of France, the Colior. Uh, area of that of the Languedoc um, and when you look up the wine itself um, they are near the Spanish border uh, you know, between the French and Spanish border they're near there so that's why they're calling it a Spanish wine in French clothing um, especially because Grenache is uh, the lead grape in this and uh, Garnacha is a grape that's used a lot in France not France we know that in Spain Garnacha in, in Spain Grenache in France, same grape, just the Spanish word and the French word for it. Um, 
And then it says the grape varietal Kunwa is often forgotten amongst the other grapes in, of this region. Kunwa provides a wallop. I've never really seen wallop used as a descriptor um, of flowers without sacrificing fruit, creating a wine that is both rich and light. Um, you can buy this from Vinebox for the full bottle for, um, where was it? $39. Um, average price on Wine Searcher is $25. Uh, in Britain, uh, in the UK, from Berry Brothers and Rudd, you can get it for the equivalent of $33. So that this pricing of $39 isn't too terribly out of the realm of what seems to be the, the average price um, compared to the Muzard, but uh, and, and and then the uh, the Saint Luc being basically almost twice as much uh, from what you can get in France. But that's the deal with that. Um, and I know I had, this is all in French, so I don't know if I had, I don't think I had anything. Yeah, they have a website, but it's in French and there's no like, give it to me in English. Um, but it looks like they were founded in or started somewhere around 1904, um, with a, as a cooperative in the village. And then I guess World War One happened because uh, they talk about 1913 and death and hostilities. Um, and then uh, sometime in 1984, the I guess the domain was founded or resurrected or something happened. Les raisins du domaine familial seront amenés à la cooperative. Yeah, like I said, uh, some of Banyuls and uh blah 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 and uh the environments uh an environment of 70 percent i really don't know what that is but they're talking about all that and something happened in 1976 and then Thierry, uh some dude named Thierry in 1981 did something so yeah we're i'm not gonna i'm not gonna continue um but it looks like since the early 1900s the domain's been around and uh uh, so they're not, you know, some, this is definitely not like, you know, when I get wine from Total Wine sometimes or even World Market, it's like, you know, some, uh, some, some unknown winery that you have no, you have no way of finding on the internet. At least these wines have actual, like the winery exists. It's not just some winery in name only and, uh, you, and, and somebody else actually makes it, you know, so good thing for that. All right, uh, yeah, let's we'll just get into the wine. Let me pull this other thing up to remind myself to talk to you about that. All right. Wow. Like the first thing that came came out of the glass was like chocolate-covered like cherries. Yeah. But like dark chocolate. Not necessarily milk chocolate, but yeah. Um, let's see alcohol in this because it's slight burning 14.5% there you go hello alcohol how are you doing some woodsiness to it but dominated by red fruit and chocolate it is really what I get They talk about this is um, paired with stewed meats and paella uh, pair perfectly, or we can make this a lot easier. Cold night plus pizza plus this wine equals perfection. I can see doing this with pizza. It's almost an Italian quality to it or Spanish quality. I know Spanish wine and French clothing. Um, yeah. So, no chocolate on the palate. I mean, if there is, only because I know it's on the nose and I'm trying to look for it, it might be like powdered cocoa. And that, that's, that's really trying to stretch it. But um, red fruits, um, there's definitely a, 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 um, a ripeness to the fruit. 
um, especially with because the alcohol. The alcohol is definitely noticeable, um, but it's 14 and a half, so that's fine. Um, it's not necessarily out of balance, but um, uh, there's there's red fruits like also getting like the skins of the fruit. There's there's stemminess to it. There's some cedar box to it. Um, there's some dried flowers to it. Um, it's it's pretty tasty wine, uh, considering this is uh, what normally what they they sell it for uh, 39 bucks. So we're talking a 40 dollar bottle of wine. Get it on Wine Searcher again, really from foreign places, 25 bucks. But uh, Berry Brothers um, sells for 33. So let's say United States, 39 is probably about right. Maybe you get it for 35, depending on how much the company, you know, how much they, they they paid for it. It's kind of a nice wine. Um, so I mean, pricing is probably about right. 39 bucks for this in the United States. Like I said, you might be able to find it for 30 bucks, but then again, in England, they're selling it for 33. So there's not much wiggle room on this one. Um, so yeah, that's a pretty nice little wine. All right, so let's get to the numbers now that we've gone through the wine. All right, so if we're using the averages on Wine Searcher, um, this collection is $59 for three bottles. So less than 88 on off Wine Searcher. And it's the only way I can compare it because I can't find those three wines on Vinebox, so I can't see how much they would normally charge for it. Um, now, they do have other wines on there, and you can buy them. So I don't know if the October box is a random collection of three wines from what's available on the website, because one of the wines in this box is sold out on Vinebox's website. So you can't buy the bottle, which seems kind of counterproductive. Um, and they have other wines on there that say sold out, and actually a couple of them you can't even click to say sold out. But at, least this, at least this one, the one that was sold out here, I could at least look at the information. Um, so anyway, 59 bucks uh, if I was gonna buy them as bottles. So that means uh, for 300 milliliters, the cost of this box from that is $7.87. So yeah, um, if you're using Vine boxes pricing, uh, then it's $104 of wine that you're getting. You're getting 300 milliliters of, of wine that will cost 104 bucks for three bottles. Um, that comes out to a $13.86 total cost. Um, so this would be 4.6 cents per milliliter using using Wine Searcher ish, you know, pricing. Um, 2.6 cents per milliliter. So there's there's how you're making the money on this. I, I'm not faulting anyone making money, and I have no idea. Um, I've only I've only got two boxes worth. I have no idea. You know, one month the box might be like the equivalent of like five dollars for for all three wines. Uh, you know, for the box itself, um, you know, it might it might be really thirty five dollars worth of wine uh, if you bought three bottles of. Or in another month it could be one hundred fifty dollars worth of wine you're getting. So without knowing anything more than just two things, and if it's somewhat random. Like if I would bought two of these boxes, would I've gotten the with both boxes had the exact same wines in it guaranteed, or is there a possibility I would have had one, two, or three of those wines would have been different than what's in here? I don't know. All right. So what do I think about what I think about it? Well, I was all excited about using this service to review wine because when they say a glass of wine to somebody like me in the industry in the United States, I'm thinking I'm getting a fourth of a bottle. That's awesome. For 35 bucks, man, you know, a little worried about what the quality of the wine is. Now that I see what we're talking about here, we're talking almost, you know, half of that, not quite, a little bit more than half of a standard uh, restaurant pour for a glass of wine. $35 for it makes a lot more sense. Um, it, there, there's there's definitely, um, I can see where they're getting, they're, they're making profit, which they have to. You can't just give the stuff away unless you're gonna have a loss leader and you're gonna hope that people are gonna buy the wines for this incredible markup um, or buy other products <laughs> that have big markups that are kind of hard to figure out. Um, so as a service, do I think 35 bucks for effectively three, six, nine, ten 10 ounces of wine is, um, is a great deal? I don't know, I mean, gotta think about the quality of the wine. But you're getting slightly over, like getting 3.4 ish, 3.3 ish ounces of wine. So I don't know anybody that when they pour a glass of wine for themselves, really only gives themselves three three ounces of wine. 
But if you're looking for something that you don't want to have a whole bottle, you want something just to enjoy a little bit, that's great. Um, at lunch today, um, the, the what was left over from each vial, I had um, uh, the Viognier and, man, you know, I had to like stretch it out, but realized I had already drank probably, I would poured out 30 to 40% of the wine um, initially for, for, uh, for review purposes. So, I mean, it was kind of hard to, to judge that. Um, and then I, I had uh, the red wine, uh, during dinner again, not much left, but considering I had, I opened it and reviewed it, but if I was just going to straight up drink it, then it wouldn't be too terribly bad. I mean, 35 bucks a month for, for that, not so bad. Um, but for me as a reviewer, I don't think it's a great value for me if I want to continue with it because I because I, I spit or if I'm going to try to review a whole bunch of wines for me to feel like I'm getting my money's worth, I have to swallow, which again, it's really not that big of a deal. I do it more out of just habit. Uh, I do it out of respect for the wine. Um, if I re make multiple shows in one day, which is not the case I'm doing, um, I'm doing three, four, five shows in a day, and they all have a lot of wines to them. If I'm drinking all those wines, by the time I get to show four or five or six, I may have a slight buzz going on, and that's not that's not fair to the wines. Um, so, as a wine reviewer, the only way I can really justify doing this is if woo, I only do one, I only do this one review, and I don't do any other ones, and I just enjoy the wine as best I can. But since I would rather enjoy wine, not in front of a camera, but like sitting on the couch or sitting at the dining room table with some food, um, I, don't, I don't know if I'm going to continue to review these wines. Um, whether I continue to use them for like personal consumption, I just don't know. Because honestly, I have so much wine from everywhere else that 35 bucks a month is maybe not the best use of my money. So, um, so I'm not trying to... It's a cigar. Um... I am not saying this is not a good value, but if you want something to drink and you want something that's kind of fun and it's at this point always French wine and you don't know where it's, you know, it's kind of a, <coughs> a French roulette, so to speak. And all the wines have been nice. They've been good quality for the most part. Yeah, that other Viognier probably been like, eh, but five of the six wines I've really enjoyed. Then, yeah, uh, it's kind of a cool thing. It's a cool concept. Um, so... Uh, especially if you're like a single person, I think it's a great idea. If you know you're a couple, um, maybe not so much, but for like that person that just wants they would get home at night from from work and they just want a small glass of wine just to relax, then yeah, I think it's, it's not it's really not that bad of an idea. Considering if you're unless you want to spend three hundred bucks for this, which I think is a great deal. Um, so you want to spend 300 bucks on a Corvin um, and, and manage your wine that way. Um, this is this is great for especially people like me that are single, right? Okay, enough of that. Uh, no more house. There's no housekeeping between this vine box, this vine box show, and the last vine box show. I'm assuming these two are going to be one after the other um, because it's only been 24 hours and really there's no no emails between myself and Pressable, so no, nothing to update there. And this wine, I mean, this show is way too long. But then again, I had to catch up from the last episode. That's going to do it for this episode. Again, as always, I hope you made it to the end. Thank you for stopping by. Click the links above on the website to friend me up. Click the links below at the website for more information about these wines and Vinebox. Um, hit the donate button to send me some ducats to purchase more wine. And uh, we'll see everyone again next time.